Pedro from EMPREX. I'm here today with the lovely and talented Melissa Bonnie to talk about Ad Infinitum, their latest record, Chapter 2 Legacy. It's out right now. Go pick it up, out right now. How's it going? Thank you. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> excited are you to finally have this album out there for fans to listen to? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your question? <laughs> we're, 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 we're right on the right path. I, I mean, I, yeah. I feel like every time we talk with each other, there's all sorts of shenanigans that go on. <laughs> so I, I feel like we're, we're in mid-season form. I, I mean, first question, and I already feel like, like we're picking up exactly where we left off the last time we talked. My, my, my yeah. question was, how excited are you and the band now that finally the album is <laughs> out there? Like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, super, super excited. You know, we had this record ready for months and we were like <sighs> sitting and waiting, you know, preparing everything. Everything was ready, videos, album, everything basically. And we were telling everyone like, it's going to be so cool, but you cannot share anything. Now we can finally share it. And we're so happy. How many, not maybe many is not the right word, but what kind of expectations did you put on yourself for this album, considering how successful the debut record was? Um, it was quite stressful because um, we, we knew that, you know, the first album, it's like people don't know what to expect. So you just put out there whatever you have. Um, for the second record, we knew that people had expectations because of the first record. And um, and we decided also to work differently because we decided to um, work without a producer since, you know, the first record, I started alone. So I needed someone to kind of help me with the instruments I couldn't play. The second record, we were already four bandmates working together. So we decided to do it without a producer. So we had the pressure of the first album plus of the change of way to work. And we didn't know if we were able to, like, able to put it off on our own without someone having the overview and telling us like, oh, now you're drifting away from what you're supposed to do or this is very good, this is not so good. So we had an extra pressure there. And um, in the end, I think it led us to uh, more detail-oriented work that that fits the album very well. Uh, creatively, what did it change for you on this record? Like you said, now it's not just you, there's a band. Mm -hmm. So that did that band now have an impact on the creative output that we see with this album? Definitely, because you can hear different influences that we didn't put into the first album. For example, there's these uh, <laughs> genty riffs or kind of metal core breakdowns and there's some touches here and there that have been brought by the by my bandmates that you didn't have for the first record what do you feel like the debut album taught you that really became helpful when putting this record together um i think first of all we got to know um like, I think we discovered a lot of what we didn't want to do because the first record we had um, this producer to guide us, kind of. And I, I, can't, I could feel that some of my bandmates felt like they couldn't express their, their entire creativity, creativity and skills and everything. And um, even though we're super proud of the first record, we felt like we were still in a... Um, that we were playing very much by the book and what we discovered in, during the process of creating the second record was everything we could do with you know just taking the time to explore our skills and um, to take more time in the studio just you know we had zero schedule we just knew that we wanted to put the record out end of 2021 but we had all the time in the world to to work on every instrument and for example for myself um i experienced i i i experimented so much in the studio um to create some vocal lines that i had never done before in on any record how how stressful was that or did you enjoy that process of, of going a little bit outside of your comfort zone i enjoyed it so much i was in the studio with jacob hansen and he's the calmest person to work with um, 
and um, I could just take the time to do some crazy stuff. And it was nice because then you're like, oh, fuck, I'm able to do this. Okay, let's try more, you know. And and it's and at some point you 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 know you create the the base of the cake and then you start to put some icing and then you're like, oh there's tons of sprinkles that I can put here and there and then you start to yeah to create something great. Wow, really interesting. Was this a challenging record for you? And if so, do you feel like you brought some of those challenges, maybe like changing your vocal lines on onto the process? Or was that something external that you feel like came in between and made this album perhaps a little bit more difficult? Mm, both. I think between between two albums, I I work on I worked on my vocals and I discovered some things that I wanted to um, to integrate. And then while creating the record, while working working with my bandmates and discovering also new sounds, um, I also developed some things um, that were that just felt right in the moment. Um, but because it was serving the song at that point, for example. I felt like this album, compared to the first one, was better connected across all 12 tracks. Like it felt, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that the debut record didn't feel like an album. It, it felt like an album, but it, it but the songs had almost a little bit of a life of, of their own, if you will. In this album, there was a more of a sense of coming together. Like they have the life of their own, but they all work really well with one another. They're all like pals, like holding hands as you're listening to this album. Is there something you guys did to give the record more that sense of, of a collective? Um, I think it's because every single song has been um, created the same way. Meaning if someone had an idea, he would or I would um, make it somehow a beginning of a demo send it to the to the rest of the band and then we would all work on it and that's how it worked for all the songs whether the the idea starts started with guitars or vocals or an entire song idea or whatever we all worked on it and spent a lot of time to yeah to make the best out of each idea and to really you know take the time to to okay this part is great maybe this one we shorten it because um doesn't bring anything to have to have it so long and then maybe the vocals okay we, we create a very good hook and then we create some extra layers and we make the guitars match and you know we really took the time probably like I said because we had this extra pressure of the first record do, do I have to ask you this because this is going to lead into my next question I don't know about you <laughs> I, I read the comments uh of, of the videos that I post and, and especially yeah. about the album review that I did for, for this record, I, I always read, I make sure I read the comments because when you review an album, it's your opinion on the album, but sometimes you like to have some other people's feedback to see did they mm -hmm. feel the same way as I did, like where we are here. Do, do you take some time to read the comments? Yeah, sometimes. It, uh, it, both on, yeah. It, it, uh, is it a positive or a negative thing? Well, it's both mostly positive I would say because from what I've seen I would say 95% of the comments are great and or constructive and then you have these five percent of people who hate you because <laughs> you're not metal enough or you're too metal or you're not growling enough or you're growling too much you know you cannot please everyone yeah. but usually I read I, I I stop reading after a while but I read both you know the comments under the videos and under the reaction videos or reviews because it's interesting also to you know sometimes there's people who make um an analysis of what you're doing and it's very interesting the, the reason i'm bringing this up is because i've seen a few comments on on my review of the album i, yeah. I feel like this album sound wise had more power than the than the debut record the debut <laughs> record had almost more of a symphonic feel to it Th this album to me felt almost more power metal driven it, it just had more juice and then I read some comments and people are telling me that, no, the first one had more juice and this one doesn't have juice enough. And I'm like, I don't think my ears are lying to me. This album feels like it has more strength. Where do you stand on the scale here? Honestly, I think it has more strength. Uh, for, I mean, for us in the band, we feel like the first record was more symphonic and um, like I said, a little bit more by the book. And for the second record, we said, you know what, fuck it, we do what, whatever we want. We want a metal core breakdown, we just do it. We want some heavier riffs, we just do it. We want some 
poppy vocal lines what the fuck we do it you know what i mean so it in in the in the end i think the result is darker heavier and also a little bit i mean i would say defines more ad infinitum like um puts us a little bit um how to say defines our sound you know what what is ad infinitum and i completely agree with you when you say that there's more power because we tried i mean that's not like we tried but we feel like because of this freedom that we had we made it heavier by simply following what influences us and 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 what makes us feel good you know to play live as well these songs we've played some of them live and just feels good you know it's cool for the crowd and it's just yeah it's great yeah i I feel like the debut record like you said is more symphonic so it it makes the sound feel bigger because of that element but on this record maybe the sound is not as big but it's thicker it it has more power it's more robust which i thought was a great element for you guys to introduce into this record because it was more punchy yeah i think you you know we have different we we worked with a different orchestrator and the direction we gave him was that the orchestration have to to um, complement the metal sound, but the metal sound still has to be the focus. And we have, for example, the drums are explosive. You know, the guitar riffs are very, um, yeah, heavy, and th- that's the focus. And the orchestrations are of course, beautiful and bringing something extra, like an extra dimension, this epicness, but they are not supposed to be the focus because it's not what's happening on stage. Speaking of the guitars, uh, the guitars on this record are bombastic, like you just said. Was, was that all Adrian's work or, or yep. did you give him some tips? Actually, I have to give also credits to Nick because, okay, all the guitars have been recorded by Adrian. But um, some of the guitars, like when we were in the process of um, of writing the demos, Nick also wrote some riffs here and there because of some ideas he had. But all the guitars have been recorded by Adrian. Yeah. Well, magnificent job on this record. Did, did he get to flex a little bit? Like he's like, OK, this is the second album. I'm going to do my thing. And you guys just sit there and you watch. <laughs> I think he did a bit of this. And it's so funny because... There's this song, I think it's Lullaby, where um, he worked on the demo with Nick and Nick told him, you know, there's this breakdown and Nick told him, Melissa is never going to accept this. And I heard it and I was like, this is good, good for growls. And I created something and then Nick told me, I never thought you would find something there and that you would be happy with it. And I was like, yeah, this is super heavy. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> never say no. I mean, I- it just surprised me and look, it made it into a great song. Yeah. I mean, there's some parts where we censored Adrian because we were like, <laughs> dude, this is, this is too genty. <laughs> this is not, nah, this is not okay. <laughs> you, you put him on a timeout. You said like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like you, you, you've lost us. You've lost us with this one. <laughs> we had the intervention banner. We're like, <laughs> Too much gent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we have to uh, uh, tone it down, tone it down, like just a notch. <laughs> tone it down. Uh, uh, vocally, what was your game plan for this record? What did you want to to achieve? Um, I think I wanted to feel like afterwards listening to the record to be so satisfied about every vocal line. Never think that this is a filler, for example. Or, oh, I could have done this better. I really wanted to take the time to think about each vocal line and especially focus on the choruses and make them stick into everybody's head. <laughs> and I mean, you cannot achieve this for every single song, but my goal was to really think about both what the, like the story they were telling, like the vocal lines, and also to make them very enjoyable to sing on stage and to, you know, that it's also a cool performance for me when I'm, when I have to do it live. I felt like this record had a little bit less harsh vocals, more clean vocals, a little bit more of your range on that side. Do you see it that way, or, or, or it maybe feels that way, but it's not quite that way. Um, I actually I think there's more harsh vocals. Really? I'm not entirely sure, but I think so. I feel yeah, I think so. 
Wow. Um, but this, yeah, I, I explored more my vocal range. I feel like um, I I really wanted to 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 yeah, I worked on my vocals between albums, so I wanted to use them and to to really bring something special to this record and not just sing vocal lines that fit, but also create another like something that brings some dimension and yeah, do some things that I've never done before. Actually, I've I've done some I've used some techniques that I usually don't that I've never before. Actually, I, I think maybe the reason why it feels that way to me is that I felt like you're, you're you you spent more time within your clean range within that part of your voice and you went in in really cool places that I haven't seen you go before. And when the harsh vocals came in, they felt more like a little bit of sprinkle of salt in a meal. So mm, it, it, it okay. Adds, it adds flavor, but it's not the meal. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you don't, I see you what you mean. The steak because of the salt, you eat the steak because of the steak, right? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I think I see what you mean because what I'm, I think what I had in mind was there's more songs with harsh vocals, but it's smaller portions. So maybe that's why you have the feeling that there's less harsh vocals. Maybe that's why. That's why. Uh, what about the lyrics? I never. I always. We always talk about music. We always talk about your vocals, but I never really ask you about the lyrics. And I felt like this album had really interesting lyrical topics. Not that the previous one didn't, but this one I connected more with it from a lyrical perspective. Do, do you write with an album in mind, or do you have a little bit of a vault where you put some words away, some lyrics away? <laughs> um, actually, before starting writing the lyrics, we decided of. Um, a character of an inspiration. Uh, for the first al album, it was Louis XIV. And for this record, it was Dra uh, Vlad Dracula. And when we decided this, because we had many candidates and we picked this one. And when we decided this, um, I started to watch documentaries and, and read and you know understand really his story, um, the story of his life. But also, you know, when you say Vlad Dracula, you can have in mind the national hero who fought the Ottoman Empire. You can have in mind the horrible person who impaled thousands of people. And you can also think, okay, Dracula is the vampire. And it's also indirect, indirectly, indirectly, indirectly <laughs> linked to, <laughs> not directly linked to his life. <laughs> 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 So because, you know, the, the, the myth of the vampire was born out of like was was born um, because of Transylvanian superstitions and linked to his life because of several um, elements. Like, for example, he had this um, this disease called porpho porphyria. I think it's uh, it's something that makes you sensitive to sun, if I the remember light. correctly. Yeah. yeah, the lights. Exactly. And, and so that's one of the things that you can connect because, you know, vampires, light, sunlight, etc. And also the fact that uh, he was buried. Uh, so he was killed and then he was buried uh, close to a monastery and I think close to Bucharest or something. And then a few years later, they opened his uh, grave and they didn't find any body in there. So they thought maybe he came back to life and he became a vampire. And as, for example, if you watch... Um, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, you have this uh, preview of his life before becoming a vampire, and then the vampire story starts. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we thought it was brilliant, like an, an like a endless source of inspiration for lyrics. With with that in mind, is, is there a song that lyrically uh, stays a little bit closer to you? Uh, I love Unstoppable. Um, it's one of those songs where, sorry. You feel unstoppable because I think right now you're you're on you're unstoppable <laughs> right now. Like you can, you can go wrong. I feel like it's a it's a it's not because I feel like this or I don't feel like this. It's more like it's motivating, and when life feels a little bit harder, it's nice to think about you know everything you've achieved and everything like all the obstacles you've overcome and. And to to yeah to just you know <laughs> pat yourself in the shoulder and say hey come on you did it. <laughs> yeah, good job, good job. <laughs> One of my favorite songs on this album is "Breed," and, and, oh. and the, the lyrics on that track 
I must say, like listening to to that song, I, I felt that you know, like I've never experienced what the song is talking about, but I felt the need to breathe and perhaps not be able to breathe sometimes and feel yeah. suffocated by not just what's happening around me, but by those around me. So you, you can almost yeah. take it in a metaphorical way. Uh, how did that song come about? Well, actually, the lyrics of this one are very, I mean, I, I, it was easy for me to write because I felt like this very much um, at many points in my life and regularly still to this day, actually, <laughs> um, where really there's so much happening and you just don't know where to start or there's, you know, everyone needs something from you or there's just all these things that you have to do right now. I mean, you don't know where to start. It's not like you have to do it right now, but you feel like everything is urgent or um, there's many, many challenges and you feel like you're underwater. Mm -hmm. And I felt like this song, writing this song was also sort of a, an autobiography. Like it was, it was nice to write these lyrics and, 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 you know, when you feel like it, just listen to the song again and be like, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's ex exactly how I felt listening to it you know like sometimes you just feel like like you're being pulled in so many different directions that you don't really know which one to tackle first yeah exactly yeah it's it's a it's a weird feeling but uh the last question that I have for you is this is chapter two so normally when you're reading a book and you get to the end of chapter two you're looking forward to turning the page into chapter three <laughs> So at what point do you start to turn the page into chapter three? Well, um, we actually started to exchange a few demos and I have a few, you know, on my phone, like, <laughs> 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 so yeah, we're, we're actually talking about when we want to write and record the, the third album. And I think it will depend on the plans that we have, like tours and 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 festivals, etc. Because in one year, um, if suddenly we have, let's say, a big tour or something happening, you kind of want to come with something fresh. But also, the album is not it's it's not old yet. So we're like, you know, we're we're so eager to create and to put out there some new material all the time. But we also have to take the time and enjoy. And also it depends a lot on how the situation with the world um, will evolve because if we are stuck another six months at home, then we might as well write chapter two. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that. Well, uh, three. <laughs> three, well, or, or maybe 2.5. Because yeah. this was really strange because you guys technically have three albums, but one mm -hmm. is a different version of itself. So it's like, is chapter two your second record or is your chapter two your third record? When I, when I was putting my review together, I was like, I'm just going to go with second record because technically the yeah. first is one and then it's 1.5. Yeah, I think, you know, since the, the, the acoustic records uh, uh, record is basically this, the same songs of uh, as chapter one, as our first record, I don't think you can call it a second album. I think you could can call it an extension of the first album or bonus tracks or yeah. <laughs> so this is definitely our second album. Well, Melissa, before you go, I just have to say this. I think the first time you came on the channel to talk to me was three years ago, maybe even four. Uh, I, I don't know the exact date. Uh, it was when Rage of Light released a record. You came on to talk about that. And to see the growth to see the, the, what you've achieved in this period of time uh, as an individual, as a songwriter, as, as a singer, uh, with a band, with everything else that you've touched, you have the Midas touch. Everything you touch turns to gold. It's absolutely oh. phenomenal. To see that growth from that first chat that we had three, four years ago, to see where you currently are today, being pulled in those different directions by everybody wants a piece of Melissa. So... Uh, <laughs> It's, I, I tip, I don't have a hat, but if I did, I would tip my hat to you because <laughs> I think you're, you're a rising star. And the beauty Thank about you. it is that we don't really know where the limit is. I don't think there's a, there's a ceiling for you. Uh, I, I remember you <laughs> talking about your dream of, of touring one day with Camelot. Like all, all of those things are, are going to be so 
so small down the line, you, you know, like the big dreams you had four years ago now are not dreams anymore. They're totally within your grasp. And, and I have to congratulate you because all of that comes from a lot of hard work. And, and I know the hard work that you put in. And I, and I feel like you deserve not only a tap in the back, you, you, you deserve a standing ovation for all your hard work. Oh, but don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not, that was not, like... that was not my goal. <laughs> That was not my goal. I just, I just the other day watched that that interview that we did, like I said, three four years ago, and, and 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 we've chatted so many times. I think you're the person who's been on the channel the most out of anybody that I've ever oh. talked. <laughs> because every time you release something, I always find a way to get have you on for us to talk about it and to see that growth uh, from from you know that the talent that you had there and the dreams and the hopes that you had, and at that time was just really far far away, like in the distance. And now you're there. You know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. I, I feel like I had nothing to do with your success, but I feel like I've been along for the ride as well. So I, I thought, yeah, it's, the back, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's actually, it's really, really nice to, to, um, to, it's, it's like a checkpoint every time there's something happening. I'm talking to you, <laughs> you know, like in video games, you have the checkpoint. It's like you're the checkpoint. You can save the game now. You can save the game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But it's so nice. Thank you so much. I mean, I'm I'm a I I'm I don't know if you can see, but my eyes are a little bit like. <laughs> a little bit your getting makeup. A... Ruin your makeup. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. It really, really means a lot. I mean, it, it's so funny because I I really re I remember I was at my parents' place, and we were talking, and and you were like, yeah, what do you want to do to achieve? And I remember talking about this Camelot thing, and I remember when we announced the. Um, the the south american tour with camelot you're like ha <laughs> <laughs> yes the, the gods heard us the gods heard our conversation <laughs> but once again Melissa, i don't think any of this would happen without all the hard work that you put in and and i, I and I, seeing somebody come from those humble beginnings and with those dreams and aspirations and see what you've achieved across these four years it's it's absolutely outstanding it just proves that with hard work you can achieve your dreams you can achieve your goals you know what i mean uh yeah. so congratulations to you and, and and the band and and everybody who's helped you get to where you are today thank you so much oh, my pleasure take care you too